Well, welcome to this episode of Monday Morning Joe. My name is Dr. Joseph McHale from the Translational Genomics Research Institute in Phoenix, Arizona. Monday Morning Joe is a quick-hitting, coffee-talk-style, six-episode series on the latest and greatest in multiple myeloma. Uh, please remember to subscribe to the Exchange CME YouTube channel and make sure your notifications are on so you don't miss a single episode. Today, we're going to discuss novel ways of treating multiple myeloma. What do I mean by that? Well, we are getting very excited and appropriately uh, for all the new immunotherapies in uh, multiple myeloma. Indeed, we have Monday Morning Joe's committed to CAR T-cell therapy and bispecific therapies. But we can't forget these other ones that may have slipped under the radar that in fact are going to be very conveniently delivered and indeed have significant efficacy and perhaps reduce toxicity from some of the immunotherapies that we've been looking at. I'm going to briefly mention three of them that I think are going to be important in the future of multiple myeloma. The first of them are the cell mod therapies. So when we think about um, cell mods, these are uh, drugs that are targeting the cerebellum pathway. And they're really, if you will, the next generation immunomodulatory drugs. So we've seen immunomodulatory drugs with thalidomide, lenalidomide, and pomalidomide, but now we're seeing this next generation that are really thought of in a different class. Uh, and two of them will be two of our three uh, novel therapies for today. The first of them is iberdamide. Iberdamide. And we've seen iberdamide as a very interesting molecule. Much like the immunomodulatory drugs, it's just a pill. Um, and so there isn't a manufacturing process. There isn't all that uh, challenge that we see with some of the immunotherapies. And it's actually really quite well tolerated. It's similar to the immunomodulatory drugs in terms of the fact that it can cause some cytopenias. There can be some fatigue. But I would suggest it's tolerated even better uh, than we saw with its parent drug, if you will, in lenalidomide. And importantly, we're seeing response rates between 25 and 35% even in patients who are truly lenalidomide and pomalidomide refractory. So it really is a separate category of drug. It really is able to overcome that resistance. And we always want in the myeloma toolbox to have drugs that are easily given, easily administered, not very toxic to the patient, especially in older and more frail patients, or indeed when patients have been, become resistant to immunomodulatory drugs. Well, drug number two also comes from the cell mod family, and it's called mesigdamide, uh, sometimes affectionately known as mezi after the uh, World Cup of this uh, uh, year with the Argentinians winning. Um, and so mezi is, uh, if you will, a next generation, also cell mod, as I've mentioned, and a next generation pomalidomide, if you will. Uh, it also has very tight and uh, strong binding and affinity to the cerebellum pathway. Way. And much like iberdamide, we're seeing its benefit and its efficacy in patients who are uh, resistant to immunomodulatory drugs, including pomalidomide. But we're also seeing remarkably with mesigdamide, because it is so well tolerated as an oral agent, that it can be partnered with just about every other myeloma therapy. So it's being partnered with all the proteasome inhibitors. It's being partnered with monoclonal antibodies. And even preliminary work is partnering it with uh, XPO1 inhibitors like cell and XOR. So I think these two molecules are going to be very influential in the future of myeloma. Thirdly and lastly is Modaca FUSP. This is kind of a look into the past and a look into the future. So for those of us old enough to remember the days of giving interferon, which was a drug we gave 20 years ago in multiple myeloma, uh, the problem with interferon is it caused so many side effects. Well, now this is a drug that is like a monoclonal antibody directed towards CD38, but it delivers interferon into the cell in a much more pre precise manner than we used to. And modacafusp has been quite impressive. We're seeing over 40% response rates, even in people who have had uh, T-cell uh, redirection uh, therapies. And so it is really uh, fascinating and interesting that we can have yet another way to target the myeloma cell. So ibertamide, mesigdamide, and modacafusp are three important th uh, therapies that, are, that you should be following in multiple myeloma that hopefully we'll have access to in the near future. 
Thank you for joining me today. As discussed earlier, please check back for new episodes on the Exchange CME YouTube page. Clinicians can also visit exchangecme.com for free access to CME in a variety of therapeutic topics. Well, thanks again, and make sure to see you again at the next episode of Monday Morning Joe.